rats are not the problem. The disgusting human behavior that is attracting the rats, that's the problem. We are basically inviting them to be here by putting out a daily buffet of garbage around the city. And these intelligent creatures don't deserve to die painful, excruciating deaths because of human irresponsibility. Ah, yes, PETA, the PETA representative, who is on the side of the rats in New York City. They appointed a rat czar to eradicate the rats, and PETA came out in favor of the rats. They love rodents, don't like people. They're consistent, at least. Well, a very happy and uh, pleasant Friday to you, wherever you may be. I hope the climate change isn't affecting you negatively like it is uh, here in Washington, D.C. Took me forever to get to work today. Of course, we had the gas company shutting down two out of three lanes headed here. In rush hour, there was no work going on. They just put the vehicles and the orange cones out to block traffic. You know, it was raining, so you can't uh, do the work. Just uh, just block the traffic. Then you call headquarters and you say, we're here. And uh, that's good enough. But uh, crazy wackadoodle-do. I'm, uh, I'm telling you. We are at 888-630-9625. 888-630-9625. That is absolutely toll-free to uh, to you, our valued, uh, our valued listeners. And... Uh, if you're in the Richmond area, or if you're going to be in the Richmond area later on, it's uh, going to be in September, the would-be presidential assassin and uh, Democrat hero, John Hinckley, will be performing at Bandito's Burrito Lounge in Richmond, Virginia, in September. And John Hinckley tweeted it out. He's got a Twitter account. He hasn't been banned from Twitter just for being a presidential assassin. And shooting James Brady in the head and Ronald Reagan in the chest and shooting a Secret Service agent, Tim McCarthy, and a, and a D.C. police officer, Thomas Delahanty. Um, he's a Democrat in good standing. He's on the loose. You know, in America, we, you know, we, uh, we let him go because, well, there's really no good explanation for that. But John Hinckley has a Twitter account. Big news, exclamation mark. I will be doing a show at Bant. He plays the guitar, you know, badly. He plays the guitar quite If I started playing the guitar today, I think I could play as well as he plays by Monday. By Monday, I think. And uh, But he'll be uh, doing a show at Bandito's Burrito Lounge. I went to their website. I went to look at their website. They've got a room with a dance floor and a disco ball and, and all kinds of stuff. At Bandito's Burrito Lounge in Richmond, Virginia in September. He uh, lives generally close to that uh, region of the country. Last time I looked. Looking forward to it. Uh, he's got an exclamation mark after every sentence. And uh, it's uh, the John Hinckley Twitter account because, you know, John Hinckley is uh, honestly, and, and, and if you're a Democrat, you're going to buy a ticket. And then, you know, John Hinckley is selling T-shirts too. And, and I, he was complaining on Twitter a few months ago that he, he can't keep his, t-shot, his T-shirts in stock because the Democrats keep buying them up. All he has to do, John Hinckley, is the man who shot Ronald Reagan and James Brady and Thomas Delahanty and, and uh, Tim McCarthy. All he has to do is put a stack of T-shirts out there and Democrats gobble them up. Also, he had uh, some so-called concert dates in New York City as well. And the ticket sold out like that. Lickety split. Lickety split. Just like that. So he's got big news. And there are people at his uh, Twitter thing. Uh, Pete says, buying tickets ASAP. I think that means as soon as possible he's going to buy tickets. As uh, And uh, Cheppy has uh, four crowns for John Hinckley. And this is your Democrat party. They love, uh, see you there, King, uh, says a guy. Oh, hell yes. This is the Democrats. See you there, John. Uh, there you go. Yeah. Uh, and then somebody says, both your fans, both your fans are so excited. Both your fans are, are so excited. So some people are making fun of him a little bit. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. Oh, it's already been canceled. Is that true? It's a, a, a WML in Washington is reporting that the gig in Richmond has already been canceled because his gigs in New York were canceled. 
But only after he sold out and people had tickets. Um, <laughs> it's already canceled. Well, I guess it was a good promo for a minute for the burrito place in Richmond. <laughs> and my friend Steve is texting me, Hinkley's gig, gig got canceled. WMAL in Washington just reported. That's great. <laughs> Poor John. Now he's going to start tweeting how he's a victim of mean people or something. <laughs> That's great. Got canceled. Poor, poor John. Amazing. He, he shouldn't be on the loose. He really shouldn't. I've got a long John Hinckley story about when he was in the mental institution uh, in Washington, D.C. I uh, shot four people. And I'm sorry to the Reagan family, the Brady family, the, the other families. McCarthy and Delahanty. Victims. He doesn't know sorry their names. Jody Foster sorry for Jody. bringing her into this. He started Jody Foster for bringing her into this. He was obsessed with Jody Foster at the time, you know. Mm-mm-mm. Yes, sir. That's uh, that's uh, that's canceled. I uh, gosh, poor poor John. You know, he's just he tries and he tries, and he and I gotta he uh, apologize to the Reagan family and the Brady family. Uh, Sarah Brady, the wife of uh, James Brady who was the White House press secretary at the time, James Brady. The White House briefing room is called the James Brady uh, briefing room, by the way. And Sarah Brady started uh, an anti-handgun organization, right, and uh, fought for gun control for uh, the rest of her life. And uh, and John Hinckley can't remember the names of the other two people he shot. I can remember, um, but he can't remember the names of the other people that he shot. He should go back to the mental institution. Of course, Joe Biden couldn't remember if you asked him either. He doesn't, he doesn't even know how many grandchildren he has, Joe Biden. He's uh, really something. Uh, oh, yeah, by the way, I've got an update for you on the uh, Tucker Carlson uh, streaming video um, because Newsmax reported yesterday afternoon that they had exceeded 60 million views. And this morning, we're up to 73.3 million views on the uh, – on the Tucker video, 73.3 million views. Uh, 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 yes, sir. D- 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 yeah, it's been canceled, John Hinckley. Boy, that's the tough breaks for uh, for John Hinckley. <laughs> what a country, huh? Crazy man, crazy. Yeah, well, I can't listen to the news breaks while I'm doing the radio here in Washington. I'm, I'm busy during the news breaks, you know. I got things to do. Not sitting around with my feet up on a coffee table listening to the news. I'm I'm reporting all these stories that the Democrats give me every day. Crazy. Yes, sir. <laughs> I guess I'm I'm glad it's uh, canceled. You know, the Democrats buy the tickets though. Anytime he anytime he announces he's gonna be playing the guitar badly somewhere, the Democrats gobble up the tickets. He posts on Al Gore's Amazing Internet T shirts, John Hinckley T shirts. Him with a guitar rather than a handgun. And uh, the Democrats buy up the tickets like nobody's business. All right, let's go to some audio, Jeffrey. What do you say? Jeff Wolf in today for Michael Piercy, who is uh, off on some personal business. Every now and then, people have to go do uh, personal things. I'm, I don't like that, I've got to say. You know, it's, I'm, I'm disappointed. But well, I'll just have to deal with it. <laughs> just kidding. It's fine. Um, all right, let's go, because I want to get to Dylan Mulvaney a little later. He thinks that if you uh, call him a boy, you should probably go to jail. It should be illegal because they're fascistas. And that goes with these people in Minnesota. you got to hear about this bill in Minnesota that the Democrats have pushed where they're, they're going to have the, a state registry, and if you say something that they disagree with, that that then they're going to put you on a registry in the state. If you say Dylan Mulvaney is a man, then they're going to put you in there. It's like a hate registry. It's a bias registry that the Democrats, it's very Soviet, very Orwellian, very creepy, very totalitarian. And uh, they're leftists, you know. It's a boy, oh boy, I'm telling you. But let's go to Joe Biden yesterday because he's not a smart man. We know that. His brain, what's going on with his brain, Jeff? His, His brain? What about it? She's a broke. She's a broke. That's what it is. That's what it is with this. Now, Joe Biden, as every school child knows, has seven grandchildren. He has seven grandchildren. That means that you're counting the uh, lovely young child. And if you've seen the young girl, I think she's four years old now. 
the daughter of the exotic dancer from an exotic dance club in Washington, D.C., where Hunter Biden used to go to smoke crack and have sex with the exotic dancers. Some might say stripper, but, uh, you know, I prefer exotic dancer because I wouldn't want to offend anybody. I might go on the bias registry in Minnesota uh, for saying something like that, that the state is running because the Democrats are fascists. That's the funny thing. Ronald Reagan warned us about this, that fascism ever comes to America, it will come in the name of liberalism. And uh, he could see the future. It turns out he was not only a great president, but also a Nostradamus-like in his ability to see the future. Um, but Joe Biden has seven grandchildren. And you may remember the, the White House at Christmas time, they have six stockings hanging from a fireplace mantle in the White House. And uh, not the seventh for their granddaughter, Navy Joan Roberts is his granddaughter's name. And mom is fighting for the right to party. Well, she already has that right. But she's fighting for the right to use the Biden name for her daughter. And uh, the Bidens are fighting against it because they don't want to acknowledge what is true and what is real. Just like the money coming in from communist China and from Ukraine and, and from Russia. They don't want to acknowledge any of those things either. But Joe Biden has seven grandchildren. And yesterday it was bring your runt to work day. And at the White House, a bunch of White House staffers and apparently members of the White House press corps, journalists, I'm making quotation marks with my fingers, brought their children to the White House. I can't believe that there are breeders that hang out there. But Joe Biden was in a scrum with a bunch of little kids and the uh, and the kids. Now, keep in mind, he has seven grandchildren. So Joe Biden told us about his six grandchildren when in reality he has seven. He's in charge of the economy. And that's why it's on the front page of the Washington Post today is not doing very well. And very limited growth in GDP, 1.1%. That's not good. This used to be America. Now, forget about it. But uh, here he is uh, lying about how many grandchildren he has yesterday to uh, little children at the White House during Bring Your Child to Work Day. I have six grandchildren. Seven. And I'm crazy about them. Which ones? I speak to them every single day. It's crazy. Not a joke. Not a joke. In fact, I just got finished going through the calls and... uh, only one of them answered the phone. Only one of them answered. So he doesn't speak to them every day. Uh, only one of them answered the phone. So everything he said was a lie. And it starts with saying he has six grandchildren, when in reality he has seven grandchildren. And even People Magazine was eventually forced to admit that in December of 2022. They're ground, proud grandparents to seven grandchildren, it says. No, that's a lie from People Magazine, their proud grandparents to six grandchildren. They deny the existence of the seventh grandchild. But, uh, but never mind that, because, you know, they're Democrats. And it's, and it's okay when you're a Democrat to, to lie. And then a, a little girl, a little girl named Amelia, Amelia, like Amelia Earhart, but she's not missing. She's at the White House, said, um, <clears throat> uh, where are your uh, grandsons and your granddaughters? Amelia, and um, where are your where are your um, grandsons or granddaughters? We're okay. Her name is Amelia. She wants to know where my granddaughters are. Yeah. One granddaughter Arkansas. lives in in Pennsylvania, in Philadelphia. One granddaughter lives in New York. One granddaughter lives in Washington. One granddaughter lives in Wilmington, Delaware. And the other grandsons, uh, my, my grandson lives in California. I left somebody out, didn't I? That'd anyway, be five. Philadelphia, Wilmington, and I did say five. You're right. So let me see. I got the girl can count, but the president can't. in New can't. York, two in Philadelphia. The little girl sounds like and Dylan three, Mulvaney. No, three, because I got one granddaughter who is, I don't know. He doesn't know. You're confusing me. Hmm. The six-year-old was confusing him. It's really, it's not the six-year-old's fault. Um, it's the president of the United States. His brain is no good. There is more from Joe Biden because he gets more wrong. And then there is, uh, well, you know, not a sad moment, but a funny moment. But at his expense, of course. Uh, how else could it play out? 
So what is it about us human beings? Anyway, we love things that raise our blood pressure, don't we? You know, news, politics, talk radio. Not not this show, other shows perhaps. But bratwurst, pizza, commuting to work in the morning. It was a little stressful today in the rain. How about one thing a day, one 30-second break that cuts the other way? You know, a way to take control of your health and help lower your blood pressure. Well, meet 120 Life. 120 Life is a natural juice drink made from pomegranates, tart cherries, cranberries, can help lower your blood pressure without any nasty side effects. It also has beetroot and magnesium. All these things are good for your blood pressure. Look them up. Just one eight-ounce bottle a day can do it. And uh, listen with their risk-free money-back guarantee. Even the thought of trying it won't stress you out. So go to 120life.com. That's 120life.com on Al Gore's amazing internet to order their two-week trial pack. And when you use the code Chris, because you're hanging with me, you're going to get 15% off. That's 120 Life. It's more than just a juice drink. It's a way to take control of your health and your blood pressure in a world that can sometimes feel a little overwhelming. We need more stuff like this on the planet Earth, don't we? These statements and products have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. The product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, prevent any disease or condition. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, Joe Biden, there's more uh, lunch bucket, Joe. Um, how many grandchildren does he have? And the news media is fine with all this. It's probably the news media's kids that he's lying to. That's great. Hey, I brought my kid to the White House and the president lied to her personally. It's a red letter day in the Schmengi household. Hey, Chris here with some exciting news. Now you can listen to me live on the WMAL app. Doesn't matter if you're in your car, in the office, on the go. The WMAL app delivers crystal clear, around-the-clock news coverage anywhere with cell service or Wi-Fi. So don't miss a second of your favorite shows. Download the WMAL app today on the Apple App Store or at Google Play Store. All right. Um, there's still more Biden to get to, and uh, you know, transgender Democrats and Dylan Mulvaney and legislator in Montana, gender confusion. But right now, let's go to the phones. Let's go to Nathan calling from Chattanooga, Tennessee. Nathan, you're on the Chris Plant Show. Hi, Chris. How's it going? Very well, Nathan. Hey, uh, I, uh, you were talking about how they don't want to acknowledge the seventh Biden child. I'm actually one of seven children myself, and uh, I think it's because they don't want to split the money. That is a problem. You know, according to the latest reports, Nathan, they've already got 12 Biden family members that are getting a a cut of the Biden family's ill-gotten largesse. Right. That that Biden name is is extremely valuable and has proven very profitable around the world. So they don't want to divvy it up any further. You know, you're right. I mean, the the money from communist China and from Ukraine, where we're sending tens of billions of dollars and all of our military equipment and munitions um, and the money from Moscow, the widow of the mayor of Moscow, uh, only goes so far when you got to chop it up among. uh, According to the latest James Comer, Congressman Comer has the documents and the bank records, at least a dozen Biden relatives Uh, involved in sucking up the money, vacuuming up the money, right? And, um, and, you know, you got a, you know, you got a, the bastard grandchild in Arkansas with the stripper baby mama. How many people are entitled to a piece of the Biden pie anyway, for crying out loud? I have six grandchildren, and I'm crazy about them. And I speak to them every single day. Not a joke. Not a Matter joke. In fact, I just got finished going through the calls, and uh, only one of them answered the phone. Yeah, well, that actually makes sense. Um, hey, it's Grandpa. But honey, he's the President of the United States. Yeah. Right. That's okay. Let it go to voicemail. Talks to them every single day. Uh, well, he calls every single day. They just don't answer. 
which uh, happens a lot to, you know, grandparents. And uh, <laughs> that is, that's pretty sad. He's a sad person. He, um, he is, but I, I don't feel sorry for him. Now, there he is uh, saying he has six grandchildren. The reality is he has seven, uh, but the family doesn't acknowledge one. Let's go to President Biden talking to Cardi B. We love Cardi B. She's hilarious. Very funny. And, uh, you know, two pairs of underwears and uh, the 30, dirtiest city in America, New York. It was voted. She said vote is the dirtiest city. Here's uh, Joe Biden talking to Cardi B about his grandchildren. I got four kids, five grandkids. Come on. I'm an expert. Yeah, he's an expert in not knowing how many grandkids he's got. He has seven. Yesterday he said he had six. He told Cardi B he has five. It's not as though new ones have come along since then. Then Dr. Jill Biden had to jump in at one point and say, no, 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 you got that wrong. Um, you know, you actually have, uh, it's 2C. Uh, you actually have uh, more than that. You don't have, uh, you don't have, uh, f- oh, wait, oh, wait, I'm skipping over one, aren't I? I apologize. Because Joe Biden went on, he went on Jimmy Fallon. I see that you uh, corrected me. Thank you. Uh, Joe Biden went on Jimmy Fallon. It's late because that's what Democrats do. They get, It's all part of the propaganda apparatus of the Democrat Party. They don't have to do any tough interviews. They just get fluffed like by Jimmy Fallon and and they get everything wrong and they lie and it doesn't matter. Yeah, I talk to them every single day. (laughs) I've been doing that forever, though. There's a there's a deal we have. I have uh, five grandchildren and uh, and every single day I either talk to them or we text. Yeah, uh, he's got five of them. He doesn't know how many are, but every single day he's talking to everyone. And then uh, Dr. Jill Biden, who's not a doctor at all, jumped in to correct him. My name is Jill, and this is my husband, Joe. And uh, your children may not know, but we have three children, and we have six grandchildren. Wait a minute. You have, but wait, you have seven grandchildren. You have, uh, but they just don't acknowledge. There's the one they don't. It's kind of an old school thing, like centuries ago, back when the Democrats had plantations and things. There, there were certain children they didn't acknowledge, and that's still true with the, the Democrat Party. Uh, Also at the White House yesterday, again, there were children there, little children, little tiny children, innocent, doe-eyed children. And they had a chance to, um, you know, gather around the the ridiculous president of the United States, and he lied to them about how many grandchildren he has, and he forgot where they live, and says he talks to them every day, but they don't answer, and so that's not talking to them, but he doesn't know the difference. And then a little child, a little tiny child, asked him— knowing that he had been to Ireland recently, asked him what country he had visited recently, and he couldn't remember. He didn't know. The last country I've traveled, I'm thinking once was the last one I was in. I've I've been to 89, I met with 89 heads of state so far. So uh, I'm trying to think, what was the last, where was the last place I was? It's hard to keep track. He hasn't been to. Um, I was, I, I mean, yeah, you're right, Ireland. That's where it was. How'd you know that? Uh, because uh, the child's brain is better than yours. And, you know, you're just, I've, I've been to, I've met with, he doesn't know the difference, 89 world. I don't think that number is real, but nobody's going to fact check it. He hasn't met with 89 world leaders since he became president. And I'll bet a dollar right now. And he certainly hasn't been to 89 countries um, since he became president and probably not even in his lifetime. But nobody will fact check that because that's not the business they're in. Jimmy Kimmel is another Democrat Party propaganda outlet. And last night they had a little prank uh, skit that they did. And, and they showed Joe Biden on the south lawn of the White House walking. And there are a bunch of little tiny kids walking around and they're wearing suits. So uh, Kimmel said, oh, look, they're tiny little miniature Secret Service agents. And then, and then a child named Yuri. Yuri must be a kid of one of the reporters. Uh, Yuri asks a... Uh, a question, uh, and then uh, it goes from there. Last night on Jimmy Kimmel. For the White House today, and uh, well, everywhere, I guess, it was take your kid to work day. The uh, president was on hand for a celebration, escorted by a tiny Secret Service detail. <laughs> These Little are kids. children of White House employees and members of the press. They were there. He spent some time with the kids. very nice, and uh, even let them do a little Q&A. What do I say? Whatever you want to say. You want to make a speech? Uh, Yes. What's your name? Yuri. Yuri. You Yuri. Yeah. You want to tell me what it is? Where is Hunter? Where the f- is Hunter? Can't answer that one. 
Well, it sounds like that child has been watching Newsmax or something. <laughs> sounds like that child is watching news. Uh, that must be another uh, uh, child of uh, the press, because you know that's that's uh, in an, and I know I grew up in a media household. Uh, I grew up in a media household, and before you know it, in fact, one of my mother, one one of my brothers, one of my brothers, his uh, first word, one of my younger brothers, his first word was uh, that word that uh, that was uh, theoretically bleeped there. Uh, media households, you know, that's how, <laughs> that's how those things go. Pretty amazing. Pretty amazing stuff. Yes, sir. Yeah. All right, let's go to uh, Democrats uh, being uh, fascists because that, that should be a, a category all by itself every day because they, you know, the Benito Mussolini model is theirs. So let's go to uh, soundbite B. We're calling it B like boy. And this is Dylan Mulvaney. Dylan Mulvaney. I got a I got another uh, a thing, Dylan Mulvaney. Um, it turns out that Maybelline, you know, the makeup people, Maybelline, they apparently have used Dylan Mulvaney, who is a man masquerading as a woman, doing, it's like the, you know, uh, gender equivalent of blackface, right? Dressing up like a lady and, and making a squeaky voice and talking like you're an idiot and a bubblehead. And uh, women everywhere should be offended by well, these people, I think you know some people sincerely want to want to do this. I don't think that Dylan Mulvaney is one of them. And uh, Bud Light, you may recall, said, "Oh, it's a, a one year as a woman." No, no, not not exactly. But there is uh, another story, another story out uh, yesterday from the New York Post. Maybelline sees boycott over partnership with Dylan Mulvaney. Maybelline is the latest company facing boycotts over its partnership with transgender social media influencer Dylan Mulvaney. The backlash has stemmed from a TikTok that Mulvaney, 26 years old, posted showing off the cosmetic line while celebrating her or his 365th day uh, uh, publicly identifying as a woman. Um, Jeff? Just for a minute now, for the next 60 seconds, I'm going to publicly identify as a woman. Kevin, Michael, for the next 60 seconds, uh, it's 43 seconds after. Next 60 seconds, I'm identifying as a woman. Don't dead name me or dead horse me or do any of that stuff. Because we got the stopwatch going. Michael's got the stopwatch going on the uh, thing. Uh, I've still got about 50 seconds to go. And, and then I'm going to celebrate one minute as a woman and maybe I'll get a sponsorship from Chevrolet or something like that. What do you think? 20 seconds into being a woman. I feel more in touch with my feelings than ever before. I, uh, I'm, I'm feeling a little emotional. I'm, I, uh, I'm feeling like a corporate titan. See how we got to mix it up like that. Um, but he says that, you know, it was uh, 365 days as a woman. Was he taking hormones or something? Because that doesn't actually make you a woman. You know, every fiber of your being, every cell in your body still identifies you, you know, X chromosomes as a woman, your uh, hip structure and your uh, everything identify. Okay, I'm a man again. All right, that was uh, 60 seconds. And that was that was very rejuvenating, I think. I just for a moment there, I wanted to have children. Just just for about 15 seconds in there, I wanted to have children. I've never wanted to have children before, but just there for just a few moments, I was thinking, you know, I want to be a mother. And uh, <laughs> I've never wanted to be a mother. I've never wanted to be a father. I've, I just want to be left alone. I just want a little quiet. Is that okay? Is that too much to ask? All right, let's go to, uh, let's go to uh, sound by B, Dylan Mulvaney. Because Dylan Mulvaney, now you got the Budweiser, the Bud Light boycott. I haven't had a Bud Light uh, since the stupidity began. And... Look, I don't care what Dylan Mulvaney does in Dylan Mulvaney's free time. I, I could care less. Go ahead and live your life, and if that makes you happy, then that's great. But uh, don't tell me that I've got to pretend along with you because I'm I'm familiar with science and genetics, and, and I know how these things work. Um, and if your skeletal remains were found uh, uh, 500 years from now, uh, clearly the skeletal remains, well, maybe not clearly, uh, would be male skeletal remains, your, your DNA... Uh, your biology, your genitalia, everything about you. You're, you're male, like it or not, apparently not very good at it. But just because you're not good at being male doesn't mean that I have to, um, because I'm being commanded to, suspend disbelief and pretend that you're a woman. That's insulting to women. 
for one thing, and you're erasing women. You know, all the all the best women are men these days. Uh, marathon runners and weightlifters and bicycle racers and track stars and golfers and you know uh, men identifying as women are crushing women in all these various sporting events and I just don't think that's fair. But let's go to uh, let's go to Dylan uh, Mul- Mulvaney because Dylan Mulvaney now says that that if you are online or anyplace else and you quote misgender Dylan Mulvaney that should be illegal illegal. And, you know, things that are illegal lead to arrests and to jail because they're violations of the law, except in Democrat cities where they put the carjackers and the murderers back on the street immediately. Here's Dylan Mulvaney. Like the articles written about me using he pronouns and calling me a man over and over again. And I, I feel like that should be illegal. I, I don't know. That's that's just bad journalism. Well, bad journalism should be illegal, and uh, and if you write an article calling him him, that should be illegal. Now, let me just stake out my position on this. That should not be illegal. That should be legal. You know, you can call anybody anything you want, and that's and that uh, should not be illegal. Uh, let's go to because the Democrats have a lot of problems with with our culture and with uh, free society. Um, it's it's getting worse, by the way. They, they're all getting worse because they're crazy. Let's go to um, this amazing story out of Minnesota. Minnesota is, is a, uh, you know, a once great state, I've got to say. And they have a state legislature there, as you might imagine. And the Democrats, they have a lot of Democrats there because there are a lot of, you know, crazy people. It's Minnesota. But the um, Harry Niska is a Republican state representative, and he opposes a new bill that the Democrats are pushing, and the Minnesota Democrats saying that, um, again, after you got this lunatic Dylan Mulvaney saying that uh, if you write in an article that he's male, and here's another thing, you can't ask what kind of genitalia do you have? Do you have, do you have male genitalia, or have you had surgery? to take that away and put something else in its place. Uh, you can't ask that because that's, you know, now you're offending me in some way. So here's Ari Niska, and they've got a Democrat there, Samantha Vang. Uh, she's a Democrat representative. And they've got a new law that they're uh, pushing, the Democrats are, that uh, if you say something that they deem to be biased, then they will label it a bias incident, and your name will be entered into a bias registry run by the state. Uh, it goes like this. If a, a Minnesotan writes an article uh, claiming or arguing that COVID-19 is a Chinese bioweapon that w- leaked from, the, from a lab in Wuhan, and someone reports that article to the Department of Human Rights, is that something that the Department of Human Rights should put in their uh, bias registry under your bill? That uh, is bias motivated, and so that can be considered uh, a bias incident. See, that is bias motivated, says Vang, and uh, therefore... You have to go into the bias registry being run by the state. And here is Harry Niska. He then appeared live on the television on the Fox News Channel this morning talking about the registry that the Democrats are pushing in Minnesota. Uh, The reason that this uh, bias registry that Minnesota Democrats are advocating is so scary is because it's entirely subjective in an eye of the 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 perceived victim. what is something that is a is biased speech um, that the government should be uh, surveilling and tracking? You know, it's part of really uh, a cautionary tale for the rest of the country about what uh, radical progressives will do if you give them narrow control in a purple state to consolidate power very quickly. They're word Nazis. They're word burners. Um, Harry Niska is having none of it. Bureaucrats at the Minnesota Department of Human Rights would have discretion to decide uh, whether things are biased or not and should go into this government speech surveillance database. Um, Another uh, Democrat representative, the the author of uh, the omnibus bill that this was incorporated into, said all of them would if the victim perceives it as being bias motivated. If you say something that offends someone, the state will maintain a database with your name and your comments in there. These are the Democrats. The Democratic Party isn't. These people are not liberals. These people are leftists. And 
They have no idea. I guess maybe they do have, you know, to say they have no idea what they're doing is probably too generous. Remember, Benito Mussolini defined fascism as a merger of state and corporate power. Um, and if you're looking for fascists in the United States of America, I can, uh, I can help. You know that you can purify the air in your home and your office and get healthy, clean, fresh-smelling air, eliminate odors, kill mold spores, mildew, bacteria, viruses, and more with the Eden Pure Thunderstorm Air Purifier, which uses proven Oxy technology. Oxy technology sends out O3 molecules into the air. The O3 molecules seek out air pollutants in your home, and the molecules destroy them. It doesn't mask or cover up bad odors and pollutants like a spray can. It eliminates them. It's called the thunderstorm because it purifies the air in your home and your office, just like after a thunderstorm. And right now, because you hang with me, you can save 200 American dollars on an Eden Pure Thunderstorm 3-pack for whole home protection. Three of them, and you can hold one in your hand. They're only this big. You get three units for under $200. That's a fraction of the cost compared with other air purifiers that can go for more than $600. So you can put one in your basement, your bedroom, your kitchen, any place that you like to breathe clean, fresh air. And with this special offer, you're getting these three units for under $200. Just go to EdenPureDeals.com on Al Gore's Amazing Internet. Put in the discount code CHRIS to save $200. That's EdenPureDeals.com. The discount code is CHRIS. And shipping is free. And the living is easy. Yeah, this is uh, the Democrats, the... Uh, you know, they love to call everybody names and then, you know, create government registries. So the state, the Democrat Party, which is not democratic at all, can monitor your speech. This is uh, authoritarianism, totalitarianism, fascism, communism. You decide. All right, let's go to uh, the telephones, Jeffrey. We got a little more bite. Oh, we got more, um, uh, you know, fascistas, too. Let's go to Ken calling from Woodbridge, Virginia. Ken, you're on the Chris Plant Show. Hi, Mr. Plant. How are you, sir? I'm well, Ken. Thank you. Good. Hey, you know, you're talking about uh, the left, and they're talking about how uh, you're not women, but egg producers, and men are sperm producers. But why does the left then want to keep on talking about what makes a baby, sperm and egg? But then they want to kill the product. <laughs> why is that? Can you answer me? Well, they're, you know, uh, they're uh, nothing if not inconsistent. Also, you know, they refer that this is what they're teaching children. I was uh, describing this story yesterday. The school system yeah. where they're teaching the children in fifth grade, they're not using the terms boys or girls. Uh, they're using egg producers and sperm producers, ironically, before they're of an age to produce either. But that's uh, that's your Democrat Party. And then when sperm meets egg, you know, they'd like to introduce you to Planned Parenthood because they're the Democrats. What can I say, Ken? They're, they're not rational people. They're Democrats. 